Welcome, Hannah. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. There we go. Got you. Hi there. Hi. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get jump in jump right into your talk, and then we'll come back for Q and A. Right. Good. Today I'll be taking you on a virtual field trip to Columbus, Indiana. We'll explore the role our community schools play in the city's architectural history and why our organization is highlighting these spaces during the COVID-19 pandemic. First, a bit about our organization. Exhibit Columbus is an exploration of architecture, art, design, and community that activates the design legacy of Columbus, Indiana. We create a cycle of programming that uses this context to convene conversations around innovative ideas and commission site responsive installations in a free public exhibition. The images you see here are a few of the installations from our 2019 exhibition, which took place from August to December last year. We're a program of Landmark Columbus Foundation, which cares for, celebrates, and advances the cultural legacy of Columbus. And in addition to our program, Exhibit Columbus, the foundation also directs Landmark Columbus, a progressive preservation effort, and the Columbus Design Institute. Columbus is known as a mecca for modern architecture. You may be familiar with images of iconic buildings and the seven national historic landmarks in our city, like this one, the Miller House and Garden designed by Aero Saarinen. The home was commissioned by industrialist and philanthropist J. Irwin Miller and his wife, Xenia S. Miller, who you see here. The Miller House showcases the work of leading 20th century designers, Aero Saarinen, Alexander Girard, and Dan Kiley. Uh, and behind them is the conversation pit. Or you may recognize North Christian Church. Both the building, also by Saarinen, and the landscape, also by Dan Kiley, were recognized as a National Historic Landmark in 2000. Uh, and this image here is a still from the 2017 film Columbus, which was shot in Columbus. Uh, and in this scene here, you see actors Haley Lou Richardson and John Cho. And there are many more, including First Christian Church, considered the first modernist building in Columbus, not to mention an early example of a modern church in the United States, and Library Plaza, known anecdotally as the community's living room. But if you look a bit closer, you'll discover that in many ways, Columbus's design legacy and its impact on the community started with investments made in the schools through the Cummins Foundation Architecture Program. For a very quick history lesson on Cummins, Columbus, and J. Irwin Miller, whose home I just showed you. The Cummins Engine Company was founded in 1919 by Mr. Miller's relative W.G. Irwin and Clessie Cummins, and they focused on developing the diesel engine. The Cummins Foundation was created in 1954, 35 years after the company began. Here's Mr. Miller, the former chairman and CEO. He understood that Cummins' success in retaining the best and brightest employees was closely tied to the company's ability to attract this talent to Columbus. Investing in a vibrant community in their headquarters city started with his vision. Miller said, every one of us lives and moves all his life within the limitations, sight, and influence of architecture, at home, at school, at church, and at work. The influence of architecture with which we are surrounded in our youth affects our lives, our standards, our tastes when we are grown just as the influence of the parents and teachers with which we are surrounded in our youth affects us as adults. In response to the baby boom of the 1950s, more schools needed to be built in Columbus. The Cummins Foundation made its first grant to support architecture fees for the Lillian C. Schmidt Elementary School designed by Harry Weiss. The architecture program became a formal part of the Cummins Foundation in 1960 with a grant for Northside Middle School. And here's Mr. Miller and Harry Weiss, that designer, in front of Northside Middle School. That's the second school that Weiss designed in Columbus, and I'll be showing you more of these schools soon. Cummins Foundation support began with schools, but later grew to all types of civic buildings and public spaces in Columbus, like the fire stations, the post office, uh, county library branch, and city hall. And city hall in this image is shown here with an installation called Soft Civic, by our 2019 J. Irwin and Xenia S. Miller Prize winner, Bryony e. Roberts, a designer out of New York, who participated in our last exhibition, Good Design in the Community. Today, Cummins is a Fortune 500 company and the foundation has sponsored more than 50 projects 
in the community and many other significant works of architecture have been privately commissioned. The resulting partnership between private and corporate resources devoted to design has created a community that continues to capture international attention and inspires our organization's programs today. One of the goals of our Exhibit Columbus programs is to grow an engaged community that is knowledgeable about, invested in the past, present, and future of Columbus's design legacy. The main way that we do this is through public events that bring people together. We alternate between a symposium year where we all gather in Columbus, shown here, and an exhibition year that uses our downtown as context for temporary architectural installations. This image here is another National Historic Landmark in town, the Republic Building by Myron Goldsmith, and what was once the newspaper building now houses Indiana University's J. Irwin Miller architecture program. And the installation that you see is by Indiana University professors Daniel Luis Martinez and Etienne Santiago, also from our last exhibition. And with that, we'll turn our attention back to the topic today, which is Columbus Schools, Good Design in the Community. In response to COVID-19, we created a social media campaign to celebrate our schools and educators during a time where you need to be physically distant, but want to stay socially connected. We chose to highlight schools first because we are continuously inspired by the forward-thinking investments our community has made in the built environment. I'm going to walk you through four schools on our field trip. So we'll begin the tour with the first school to receive support from the Cummins Foundation Architecture Program, Schmidt Elementary School, designed by Harry Weiss, who we saw earlier. The original school consisted of a kindergarten area and 12 classrooms, which you can see here. We kept the building low to the ground, much like the houses in the surrounding neighborhood, so as not to overwhelm the children in their introduction to school. And here's some of my favorite interactions from our audience when we posted this online, including from the school's Facebook page itself, uh, who shared the post at the end of their first e-learning week. Um, the local fire department uh, got excited about it as well. And then community members who either had children or grandchildren who have attended Schmidt, or they taught there themselves. And that's just a small sample of the connections being made related to the school post. Our next school is Lincoln Elementary School, which is designed by Gunnar Burkitz in 1967 with support from the Cummins Foundation Architecture Program. When we shared this post online, we included a list of fun facts, and there's definitely plenty about this school, but two of my favorites are that the First Lady of the United States at the time when the school was built uh, was Lady Bird Johnson, who dedicated a plaque at the entrance of the school during her Crossroads USA tour uh, to honor both the school and then Columbus itself for efforts in beautifying America, which I thought was pretty special. And then the second is that later on in the 1980s, when St. Peter's Church across the street decided to build a new sanctuary, they chose the same designer to design the building. The concentric rings of the Lincoln School building and site plan were used as an influence on the concept for the church design. The two Burkert's buildings sit across the street from each other and are used as originally intended to this day. And I think using the same designer, this community being inspired uh, by what the school did really speaks to how support from the Cummins Foundation Architecture Program to build these excellent schools inspired further investment throughout the community. And we see that continue to this day. Uh, this comment here up on the screen uh, is from Randy Royer, so landscape architect, and he actually was part of the design of the playground that we see just behind the school. Uh, and that's a part of the Linden Project in Columbus, uh, which has inspired continuous improvement of the playgrounds for all the Bartholomew County schools. So we really see that cycle of investment in design continue. Now, this is one of the more unique spaces in Columbus, Smith Elementary by John M. Johansson, which was finished in 1969. Uh, this building's defining feature is the brightly painted steel ramps, or what is known as the gerbil tubes, uh, that connect the modular sections of the school. And when we shared this post online, there was a lot of love for the gerbil tubes, a lot of fond memories uh, of students who went there um, from folks who were part of the original graduating class at the school uh, to more recent students. This is still a school today and still just as loved and had to show an extra angle here. So you get the bird's eye view just to see the color. It's, it's fun. And we'll end our virtual field trip today with our fourth school, Southside Elementary, what we fondly referred to as Brutalism's Bright Side in Columbus. Uh, though the exterior concrete walls and slot windows might resemble a fortress more than a traditional school, 
Uh, the students who grew up within the walls of this building shared more than a few fond memories with us. Here are two of my favorites that came up uh, from trying to remember your locker combination or going to school dances um, to folks who were reconnecting with people in the comment section of a Facebook post. And I think one of the most interesting aspects of this campaign for us has been the amount of conversations we're having with community members and architecture fans. Uh, while we may all be behind a screen uh, for a few moments a day, uh, people are transported back to walking the halls of their high school or a college student is introduced to an architect they admire. And personally for me, I was able to research all of these buildings and learn more about them while all of our public programs are on pause. Um, and just as Columbus has done in the past, we are looking to designers, architects, and artists for creative and innovative solutions and spending time reconnecting with our communities and social networks, even if for now that means behind a screen. Thanks for taking a virtual tour of Columbus with me today and spending some time learning more about the stories of our built environment. Uh, we hope to see you online and in person again soon. And here are <laughs> websites and where you can follow along for our next feature uh, that we'll do. And thanks so much. Hannah, thank you so much for a virtual tour uh, from the comfort of my own office. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> very much appreciate it. I wish we could be there because you guys do you guys do tours and um, and things, right? Yeah, the Columbus Area Visitor Center does a bunch of different architecture tours in Columbus, and then we lead tours uh, when our exhibition is up. So we've done that in 2017 and 2019. Um, but yeah, we wish we were down there too. <laughs> And uh, is that a map? What map is that behind you? This is, so this is Columbus, Ohio, which I was making the Cat joke. Twist. <laughs> Alex has talked before. I was like, oh, you've got Columbus, Ohio and Columbus, Indiana back to back. And I have a little of both <laughs> in our house right now in our, our home office life. Well, uh, Scott, do you have any questions? I have about a million um, that's going to start with when do I get my personal tour of Columbus from you? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so I, there's just Exhibit Columbus specifically is just, it's so much bigger, right? Than like what you can just like sum up in like a little snippet. Is there like, is there a part of it that excites you the most? Like you personally the most? Oh, I always like the feel good questions. Don't come for, yeah. don't, don't come to me for your analytical questions. I'm going to ask you the <laughs> feel questions. <laughs> I mean, our program Exhibit Columbus, I mean, I feel really honored to be able to get to work on a program like this that reaches so many different audiences. And the way that we approach all of our programs is to be as engaging and as accessible as possible to the community that we work in in Columbus, as well as the global community that we can reach online um, or in person when folks are traveling and kind of crossing Columbus off their bucket list um, and getting to introduce them to a lot of the designers and architects and thinkers that we have the pleasure of getting to work with and convene. Um, so that's the most inspiring part to me is just the community that we work in and the people. My husband is filming me from our living room because that is the world we live in right now. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a wonderful program and I'm excited uh, to see how we transition in the coming months to keep bringing programs to folks online like you're doing uh, and then in person again, safely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. We're going to transition to our next speaker. So if you wanna learn, uh, if you want to continue the conversation, join our Slack. Uh, pop a question in our YouTube chat or, uh, you know, write on our Miro board. There are so many ways. Um, so thank you. And we will see you online and in person one day.